Hello and welcome back to the Watford Way and a really, really exciting match preview for you today. As is every match preview, obviously, because you get to see my wonderful, wonderful face. But apart from that, um, it is Stoke City versus Watford. And um, yeah, really, really excited for this game. Obviously, Stoke City doing really, really well this season. They nearly got relegated last year, but this year they're actually challenging um, for them play of spot. But before I get into my thoughts on the game... As usual, we usually get an opposition fan on to give their thoughts. And today, you might have seen him earlier in the season. He did, also did a video for us there for the reverse fixture. Um, we've got Ben on from the Why 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 Files podcast, and he's here to give his thoughts on the fixture. Hey up, guys. My name's Ben. I'm from the Stoke City podcast, the Why 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 Files, and I'm here to preview our game versus you, Watford, on Friday. Uh, we've obviously played each other at some point during the season already. Um, I <laughs> I think you were fortunate in that game with the goals particularly. Uh was one an own goal, uh one had a hint of offside or something like that. It, it, either way, I think Stoke fans were a bit disappointed after that game, considering that we were playing a team like yourselves doing well and yet we couldn't come away with points. Um having said that, um, you know, we're not fools, we know that you guys are a team looking to be at the right end of the table this season and you are doing so you sit third as i record this at the moment i think midway during a game today possibly um that is where uh, i think anyone would expect you to be at the very minimum i think a lot of people had you down as having the best squad in the league uh whether that's proved to be so i know i talked about before about how watford may struggle just because of certain players maybe not having their head in it having been relegated down to the championship from the premier league uh, it's tough and dealing with that expectation as well you know having the best squad in the league some would say at the start uh, many would have you well top well clear at the top by now uh, that's not quite the case I know you're in and around but still um, I think you've suffered similarities to what we did uh, a couple of seasons ago when we went down so I do sympathize with you on that front um, from a Stoke point of view uh, we're doing really well this season. I'd like to think so anyway, after nearly being relegated last season. Um, we are still pushing for the playoffs, which is really, really exciting from a Stoke point of view. Um, we've made it to the quarterfinals of the League Cup, got knocked out by Spurs. Uh, we got knocked around, uh, We got knocked out at the first round of the FA Cup by Leicester. Um, after putting in a poor show against them. Um, but to be honest, it's been a good season considering we've had so many injuries since, I think, your game. We've had the goalkeeping crisis where we had, I think, five or six first team and youth goalkeepers all injured at the same time. It was <laughs> it was a bit unreal, really. Um, but yeah, we've had injury crisis, the same as a lot of teams have this season, I know. Uh, but they've been to key players. Ryan Shawcross hasn't played a game for us since the start of last season, pretty much. Um, we've got the likes of Joe Allen, who've only just come back. Sam Klukas has been out, John Ewan McCall has been out, Stephen Fletcher. Uh, Morgan Fox was our only left back until a, a couple of days ago. Uh, I mentioned the goalkeeping crisis. We've had so many injuries to key players across the board. Um, it's forced us to play some youth players. Um, Tyrese Campbell being one of them who played against you, I believe, last time. He's now injured out for the rest of the season, which is gutting for us. Um, but then we've brought in other young players as well, like him who's done well. Um, Harry Suter has done, done very well. Nathan Collins has done very well. Uh, we brought in Reese Norrington Davis, who's started very well. Uh, Joe Bursick is now in goal for us. He's been doing incredibly well since he's come in. Um, and it, it's exciting to see. We've got one of the youngest squads that we've ever played in any league before. I think it's uh, our, our youngest squad in 19 years, somebody said the other day. Um, I know that this time last year, we were playing a team with an average age of 30. To get that down to about 23 in a year is quite something really and as you can see we're doing much better than we were last season so we're really pleased with that um in terms of the game itself on the injury front um our goalkeepers are all expected to be back that's angus gunn adam davis joe bursic should be available um so we've got the pick of the three i imagine it'll be bursic because he's been playing for the last few games now um i expect him to stay in goal he's been doing really well but he didn't play particularly well against rotherham the other day, uh, we uh, we drew 3-3 there. Uh, it feels like a bit of a loss. Uh, but, yeah, uh, I expect him to be in goal. In the back line, we've got Morgan Fox out. But as I say, Norrington Davis comes in. I expect uh, James Chester, I think, is coming back from suspension too. He should help shore up the defence along with Suter and Collins. 
in midfield. I imagine to change it up again from the last game, you're looking at people like Jordan Thompson, Joe Allen, Klukas coming back as well. Um, up front, Nick Powell, possibly. He's been playing sort of a winger, false 10, 9 role. Uh, Stephen Fletcher, I hope, is back for this game because um, he he's an excellent player for us, as has been an excellent player for us when he's not been injured. Uh, Ravi Matondo has been a headline signing in the championship for us on loan. Um, he's been doing well, reasonably well, considering his inexperience from my point of view. He's an exciting winger. I, I, I don't want to say he's as talented as Ismail Assar, certainly not, um, but he's that sort of player. Um, so hopefully he gets to build game on game now. Um, and in terms of team news, we've not got a lot of people out anymore that I'm worried about, particularly. There's a couple of squad players who are missing. Lee Gregory uh, is a miss. As I said, Tyrese Campbell's the biggest miss we've got at the moment, but he's out for the season, not expected to come back anytime soon, certainly not for this game. Um, so how do I see it going? Well, we are struggling to score goals. I think that's our biggest problem. We scored three in the last game versus Rotherham, um, but that's been sort of contradictory to our season because we also conceded a lot of goals against Rotherham. And I think in 2020, we kept the most clean sheets in England. Um, I, I think that's right. Anyway, um, we've been doing really well at the back and without Campbell, we've been struggling for goals. Uh, hopefully we're starting to find that balance again now, hopefully just in time for you guys. Um, and I know you guys have a lot of power up front, you know, a lot of great players. I'm going to go for, because Stoker at home, we've not been doing excellently at home compared to our away form, I'm going to go with a 2-2 draw on this occasion. I think both teams are good teams going into this with their own qualities. Um, we've had, I think, the extra day to recover ahead of this game. I know, uh, I think if you're playing today, Wednesday, Friday is a bit of a tight turnaround. Um, but we'll see. I'm excited for this game. Um, it's one I think we need to... It's not a must win, certainly, but I think it's a chance to see what level we're at. If we can play well against you guys once again, um, then I think that aspirations for promotion aren't, aren't, aren't unrealistic, to be honest. Um, but best of luck to you guys anyway, apart from this game, for the rest of the season. Um, and I hope you enjoyed watching. I hope you're staying safe in this lockdown. I hope you're staying safe and well um, and peaceful. Other than that, again, thank you very much for watching. Enjoy the game on Friday and I'll speak to you soon. Yeah, so really, really, really interesting there from Ben. Obviously, he mentioned Stoke are doing really, really well this season compared to where they were last year. And um, yeah, it was quite a tight game, wasn't it? The, the reverse fixture we played earlier in the season. Um, <clears throat> and yeah, it's going to be a real challenge for us, I think, going into this game, especially considering we've still got quite a few injuries. Um, we obviously scraped by in the last game against Barnsley um, through the Troy Deeney penalty, which was absolutely fantastic. He properly walloped that into the net. Didn't need a goalkeeper, didn't have to stand a chance with that. But but we it is what it is. We are where we are on the table. We are third. Um, you know, really, really positive at the moment. Everyone in the fan base is kind of behind Zisco. Um, he obviously had a really, really difficult start to life at Watford. He obviously played Man United, Swansea. Norwich, those are really, really, really difficult teams in the circumstances that we were in, obviously sacking Vladimir Ivic. Um, so hopefully we use this game to, you know, rectify our what is really, really poor away form because because ultimately our home form is statistically the best in in the country across the top four top four leagues. And by that I mean the Premier League, Championship, League One, League Two. We've got statistically the best home form across the whole country. So that's obviously a really, really, really um, good positive. Um, and we've seen that, how we've performed at Vicarage Road. We're, we're excellent the majority of the time. Um, but away from home, obviously defeated at Old Trafford, which wasn't too much of a surprise. Um, but obviously Swansea, we got beaten after, after going ahead in that game. And this is something that we need to rectify if we are to challenge them automatic promotion places. Because to be up there, you have to really, really, really... Um, consistent in your form, not really dropping too many points um, at home or away from home. So that is something we need to rectify. I did mention our injury list just a second ago. Um, it's not key players who are injured. The injury list hasn't actually changed from where we were before Huddersfield or before Barnsley. Um, Stipe Paritza is still out. Um, Cabasele is still out. Ben Foster, obviously, um, probably the most high-profile player who's out with his 
his broken finger. Um, you know, it's what it is. Daniel Backman obviously gets a chance because of that, which is really, really good to see. Um, and yeah, Isaac's success is still out. I mean, he's been out for what feels like about three years. So quite frankly, now I couldn't care less about Isaac's success. Um, and Domingos Keener, I think, was the last one um, I've got to mention, who's he's recovering from a hamstring injury, I believe. So there are some absentees there, but as I said, not really key players, apart from maybe you'd say Ben Foster, who, who would usually start games. So that's positive to see. Um, in terms of formation, obviously Zisco consistently has gone with that 4-4-2 formation with Troy and Andre Gray up top. Um, João Pedro... I don't know whether he was being rested or he was dropped. I'd assume he was being rested um, against Barnsley. he come onto the pitch, made a real impact. Same with Zinkenagel again. He was on the bench. I think we all want to see him start. Um, and yeah, it's going to be really, really interesting to see what happens. I obviously hope that Watford can get that, that win away from home. And I think we've only won, is it, I mean, correct me if I'm wrong, but haven't we only won once? away from home or twice um, I can't quite remember but the record away from home quite frankly isn't good enough anyway whether it's once or twice so so we do need to rectify that away at Stoke and we also have another away game after that so we really really need to keep on going um, in this relatively good form that we're in under Zisco beating Norwich beating Barnsley beating Huddersfield we need to keep this going keep up there keep pace with Norwich at the top who are currently 10 points ahead of us I believe but we do have that game in hand so obviously that is helpful um, but yeah I think I've covered everything there obviously let me know your thoughts on the game uh, in the comments below let me know your score prediction as well that'd be really really interesting I'm gonna go what should I go for I'm gonna go with a 3-1 to Watford uh, Zinkenagel and Jao Pedro with the goals and um, yeah, really, really excited. So make sure to hit subscribe on the channel. Make sure to like this video. And as I just said, comment your score prediction for the game. Thank you very much for watching. And I'll see you in another video very, very soon.